So I'll start the recording, right? Well, oh, somebody already started it. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so welcome to the chaos uh, community call. Um, minutes have been posted. So you can kind of see on those minutes, I have a couple things that I wanted to bring forward. Um, one was the chaos community reports. So I just wanted to kind of keep everybody posted. One of the things that we're doing in the chaos project is working on um, community dashboards or not community dashboards, community documents like a PDF. And so these would be um, put together for two different communities, uh, Zephyr on one hand and Jenkins X on the other. So we had a meeting um, was it last week at the end of last week on Friday mm -hmm. with members from those communities and we kind of have a path forward right now we're the, the hope is is to see a lot of the chaos metrics in practice meaning on these PDFs and something that these communities can share amongst their communities with community members and community managers just to give some insights on on their projects. So um, I did put a link in there to Georg, I put that preliminary dashboard. Hope you don't mind on that one. No, that's perfect. Okay, so this is using Cauldron, which is um, a web interface from Grimoire Lab slash Petergia. So I think that's what you were using, right? And then I also put a link to the Zephyr project as Augur is providing insight on that. Mm -hmm. And so the idea here is, is not necessarily to provide the dashboards to the communities, but to provide kind of a condensed version of these dashboards, again, in a PDF, just a, a community report. It's more like, a, I mean, it's a synthesis of a lot of the raw data that these dashboards all have so that it's in the language of the specific concerns that a community has. So there's a... Yep customer interaction component instead of a, here's all your data, good luck. Yes, and so we will try to condense it down. Um, Sala used the raise hand thing and I've never seen that used in one of our meetings. <laughs> so, uh, uh, it's better for me to always raise my hand because if yeah, I- Yeah, that's great. How did you raise your hand, by the way? Um, well, you can't if you're the uh, uh, host because- Oh, okay. I that your hand is raised whenever you speak. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, it's also implied in my case, but I learned to pr push the button because I speak a lot and interrupt everyone. Uh, big tangent, and hopefully there will be less of tangents over time. Let's start off as big tangents. Um, for the past year, I've been working on an engine called Markout, and it's basically saying that, okay, Markdown was cool. It was invented to be server-side rendered. Um, it basically just takes your uh, DOM kind of inert or the other word in whatever. Um, and b basically I'm bringing this up because um, I, I decided to go a direction that most people don't do. They say they create their own flavor of Markdown, but I, I created a rendering engine which I call Markout. And the idea is that it's an interactive um, um, Markdown inspired um, um, way of writing documents that you know the author of the document can feel uh, connected to the material. It's readable. It can be shared in, in raw text. Mm -hmm. uh, then it hits the DOM. It's actually rendered in the DOM. Um, and then it becomes interactive um, because it doesn't, it doesn't bind itself with legacy thoughts of server-side rendering and security. It's right there in the browser. It adheres to the security of the browser. Um, and at the same time, because I come from a printing background, uh, an important component for me was to close this debate about uh, print first or web first. It turns out it's neither. Um, so so I'm, I'm bringing this up here because um, so far I've been just prototyping this engine for my own personal use. Um, and um, a couple of days ago, it, you know, I was reminded of how much it took for me to come up with a, with a good way to say, okay, here's data that will look well in the browser, uh, sorry, a document that will look well in the browser, but as soon as you hit print, you get a very consistent feel. And the concept uh, of that, um, where the debate is print first or web first, 
is to actually, um, you know, details, but, but there's, a, there's a subtle concept about how the reader looks at something. Um, it, it's basically based on something called like the column uh, width or the column size. Um, when you read a column of text, no matter what format, there is a particular width where your head and your eye movement is convenient for how you consume that particular um, thing you're reading. Um, I would love to, you know, get into more details. I get very excited, but let, let me try to be courteous. Um, I would love to actually see this um, grow. Um, and I think it could be an ideal place for, you know, for me to bring this, um, you know, try to deliver something to be used when you're creating these documents. Do you um, have a link, Saul? Well, my site is built with that engine. It's, uh, I'll share the link. Uh, yeah, just put it in the minutes. And I'm guessing, I was guessing that what you're proposing here is that we try this format for the reports. Well, it's, it's a design space, right? It's uh, like, I'm sure there are solutions that try to give you a way to create um, content that is web and print. Um, but, but this is a novel approach that tries to really make it, um, you know, um, I guess, unlocking the features that Markdown locks, um, making, um, making the consumption oriented to the reader, regardless of the media. And um, down the road, I want to actually implement something um, that puts accessibility um, as, as, a, as a concern. Uh, as you create all these uh, parsed nodes of your documents. Um, are, there, so are there features, Saw, that would let a graphic designer sort of create some of the pretty things? I think one of the things this group generally lacks is the instincts or technical skill to make something look beautiful and easily understandable. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, I design, right? So I can design Illustrator things, but okay. since I started Markout itself, like I only introduced images because I really had to put an image to talk about it like six months later. Um, so can I download Markout and give it a shot? Um, it, it works because I've like <laughs> coupled it on the site. Like, like I haven't thought of making this as a package yet, except last week, uh, you know, um, you know, I've been asking around if people want to use it. People are like, yeah, it's cool. It's nice. But last week I was like, okay, here's the thing. I'm going to convince someone to actually use it. And they did. Um, and, and so I've, I've been thinking last week of all the refactoring that I need to do to package it. Um, like, um, you know, the best, the best uh, demo I can think of is um, this link, which is like the readme file of Markout itself. Um, and I'll give you the GitHub page for that because it comes from the markdown and it renders in your browser. Um, and it doesn't use any kind of uh, third party dependencies um, because I myself struggle to rely on them um, comfortably growing, you know, scaling an application. It's okay. The, the first, the first link that, well, the first thing that you, you sent, almost sends me to the same page. I guess it sends me to your github.io domain, but. Um, yeah, but, but I think the, the second <clears throat> link should have opened a, uh, the hash, like copy it and paste it because I think uh, the hash might have been dropped. Yeah, um, okay. Oh, I got it, I, I got, okay. Yeah, so. that's just because I didn't build that engine, you know, as a, as a you know, a logging platform. So I just use hashes to point it to different markdown sources. Um, so it's like a, like an SPA without actually having an SPA framework. Um, anyways, um, sorry to distract. This completely was not the intent of my segue here, but uh, I think the details were kind of needed. Um, sorry. <laughs> OK. I'm no, curious. But, yeah, so I think, I mean, I don't think what I'm hearing you say is that this might be a way to deliver this content to the groups. That's ultimately what I'm yeah. thinking. 
Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm hearing too. Yeah, and I can tell you that we didn't have, I don't think we've discussed a way to do the delivery at this point. So looking at Georg, shaking his head no, and I'm pretty... I mean, we talked to the LF about them possibly giving us a graphic designer who could make a template we could fill in. Yeah, but we sh we haven't yeah. like really well we haven't executed on that. I think that conversation was yesterday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so I would love to see Markout grow to fill needs, practical needs, right? So so it's a it's a design space as in it's it was an experimental thing I did. I used it just to blog because I couldn't yeah. write blogs before and it's it's not really blogging, it's like blogging but not at people, you know. So how, I guess one of the yeah, so one of the things I would have, I mean, I don't, it's, again, because we haven't discussed this, I don't think that no. there's any discussion yeah. about using this. Um, so I would, I think we, one of the things in these community reports, I want to make sure that they're available through the chaos website. So yeah. that I think that's just super important. And so we'd have to figure out how well this connects with kind of what we have at the moment mm -hmm. yeah. or how we would deliver that. It's uh, one custom element, and of course, a yeah. lot of JavaScript uh, can bundle. I don't bundle, like, I'm not going to lie. I bundle, but not to, you know, not Webpack and all these things. Um, but I'm aware very much of, of all these things, and that's why I don't use them. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, the, uh, the idea here is that Parsing is done uh, in the main thread, where it could be done in a worker to make it more responsive. Uh, be, but I, I keep everything just uh, prototype at this point. Okay. It should need to be packaged and done, you know, uh, used reliably. Um, definitely um, uh, portability. It's a custom element. I know you guys use Angular on your website. Uh, I've had uh, a thing about React not reacting well to web components, uh, you know, per spec HTML5 web components. Um, but, you know, even React can handle this. Um, so, um, you know, it's, it's a long-term thing. I'm just offering it. Uh, I would love it yeah. to be useful. It will, it will certainly keep me, you know, more hours per week coming, you know, to chaos things. And, yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> So yeah, yeah I, but I mean, having having more people involved in the development of these community reports and ways that we can improve delivery, whether it's on the web or in print, as you were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. I'm I'm all for it. I think I had just lazily always said PDF, yeah, as a, as a <laughs> just yeah. just because, but not it's because a, I love it. Just yeah, it's a portable document format. Yeah, it's just so people would understand what I'm kind of getting at. So. so the philosophy is a single source of truth. You have one markdown that is human readable and writable, not just you know claiming to be human readable. Uh, and then you look at it and you can't really know what happened to the div in the ten pages ago when you scrolled. Yeah. You know, so so it's meant to be human readable, single source. You don't create all these versions. These versions are just merely the rendering of the single source. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's. Um... Well, I was going to say, so if in a, let's, um, let me just start at a computer. So let's, yeah. pretend, <laughs> so let's pretend that we use this in the development of the reports, Sala. Mm -hmm. What would be a reasonable next step? Well, you see what like what's the most logical next thing to think about? Well, the first thing is to, uh, for, for, for me, you know, for the side of development to actually package this, which, you know, it has been on, on my calendar this week, but I got mm -hmm. this week actually adding more features. <laughs> yeah. uh, the second thing is to, uh, you know, for, at the same time, is to also uh, try to come up with what conventions we want to do, because when you create a single source document, it, it basically will have things that are, you know, contextual print only, contextually um, uh, screen only under certain cases, uh, you're, you're creating a, a text that, uh, that basically can, can kind of be or, uh, like isomorphic, if I can borrow this word. Um, and, and, you know, I can, I can in the end share my screen and show you quickly an example of how I made 
an interactive playground, at, you know, not the context itself, but rather this is definitely meant to be used in the browser. Um, and I also made sure I put in it um, things that only print. Um, and when it prints, you can basically see that it reads okay, uh, but it also tells you that you should go and try the interactive playground. Um, so I'm, I'm personally, I'm willing to try this because I, I spent a good deal of effort trying to get LaTeX to compile to a document and to a blog post maybe a year ago and yeah. uh, eventually just gave up on that dream. So if this sounds like it does something similar, especially for print, I think it, it looks pretty lightweight to play with. I'd probably, I'd send you a half dozen questions out of the gate about how to get started because there's not a, not yeah. a, where do I begin read me? Um, no, no, and, like that read me, I don't think, you know, I, I, I could not write it, right? Like I, I sit and say, okay, where do I begin? About writing a readme, so so it has to come by by questions that that pe people find essential. Sure. Um, at least you know uh, it's open source, by the way, and I welcome very much people joining. You know, we can have a meeting about Markup, uh, Markup. Sorry, um, you know, in that project, if you want to um, onboard. Um, but for now, you know, um, let let's say we can have a follow up at some point. Um, yeah, take some time back for. Uh, you know, I'm sure there is agenda items. I mean, I'd be happy to set aside like 15, 20 minutes sometime just to get me off the ground. And then I could, we could talk about the experience at a later time. Um, you know, in, in the end, if we have time, I can quickly show just the playground thing. But, you know, that that's all just experimental. Gary, yeah. do you have any comments on this? Because you're also on the community report side of things. You're muted. If you, if you have comments. So one of the things we've been talking about is to produce a one pager mm -hmm. and to use um, like pretty visualizations and have it more marketing -y looking with uh, gradients and shades and all that. Yeah. Um, my understanding of Markdown, it's great for text. And um, but when we start having visual elements that span different parts of the document and so on, uh, th does your Markout support that, Soleil? Yeah, you, you can do full HTML in, in Markout. Um, no, no restrictions. You can have scripts, styles, um, you know, I've, I've just configured it in, in my, uh, what I like to call frictionless configuration, where I don't have configuration files wherever I use it. Um, but, you know, if, if we, if we want to build a configuration-based pipeline uh, and, and start to add features um, of, of a branding, consistent, consistency, special styles, all these things, um, you basically are writing um, not just the subset of HTML that, that GitHub allows and other sites, you know, copy, but rather um, anything that goes in the DOM, you can put inside your Markdown document. It obviously becomes a little bit harder to read if you are turning it into HTML to make it interactive. And so um, I've only um, discovered that there are certain specific elements that you can write as shorthand HTML, right in the HTML spec. Um, and, and I find those a, a favorable compromise, you know. Um, as so I'm, happy, I'm happy to try it. Yeah. Yeah, same here. And explore, see if this fits our needs. OK. Perfect. All right, so I'll just leave that link for the playground. Um, just be sure to try to print it um, in Chrome. Um, and, and if it doesn't open in Chrome, just copy and paste the link. Um, it, it should work in Firefox and Safari. Firefox has really bad printing, so I don't recommend printing. Um, um, Safari takes a little bit longer to parse. That's it. Done. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Saul. Um, I'm going to put that in the minutes. Um, OK.
So chaos con, I think that's it for the reports. I think those are moving forward. Otherwise, with Georg and Sean, um, chaos con. I have a question. It's um, <laughs> do we really want hats? This is not. This has nothing to do with organizing chaos con or anything like that. Um, but is this something we actually want to do? So I have. Because if we do, then. I need to order them. I don't need a hat. I mean, it's just, it's, it's money and it's time and effort. Yeah. That's all. I mean, I, that's... I use hats only in winter. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I get some thumbs up from people, but it's just, there's, there's overhead that comes with this. So that's all. And is it really something we want to do? I think we had, we had talked about uh, how many stickers we were going to need for FOSDEM if we if we get the table. Yeah. Uh, it it might be better to spend the money on stickers because uh, I think yeah I know you you had said that the the number of stickers was uh was pretty high when uh, when Baturchi was there was that correct? I think I remember that conversation too. I feel like we've never run out of stickers. No, but I we think always we always run out of stickers. Sorry, that was. I think it, yeah, it falls them. I think it's like a. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it happens fun. very quickly. So I so, personally, I mean, I like. I wish I could have a hat right now, but like ordering them and dealing with that and then bringing them over sounds like a bit of a pain to me. I'll just be real honest with you. <laughs> so. If we order them, the most logical thing would be to see if we can order to the hotel. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, stickers you can That's easy. in your suitcase, but yeah. the hats are a little bit more. Yeah. Could just order them as a, as a speaker gift as well. All right. Well, there seems to be general consensus to get hats, so I can... I got one, I don't care, and two yeses. Yeah. Sean, do you care? I, I like hats. <laughs> I like the knit hats. I'm in favor of the knit hats. I'm going to go with knit hats, please. All right. You can't see I'm trying to drag my feet on doing this. <laughs> you, you can't read between the lines. <laughs> All right. If you don't want to get it, then don't. No, worry. I'll do it. It's just there's, I don't know, I, it's dealing with community bridge anymore is getting to be a bit of a pain sometimes. Um, I'll see if I can't buy them right out of there. Um, okay, cool. I'll do it. So that's a yes. Somebody put yes in the minutes. Yes. AI Matt. All right. Um, any other? I didn't have any other chaos con stuff. Gary, did you? Sometimes we use this meeting. Do we still want to use the meeting today to talk about chaos con stuff? We can defer some of this discussion until we get through these other points. So most of uh, chaos con is um, working. Just a reminder that our CFP closes in eleven days. So please encourage folks to submit. Yes. And. That's the chaos con discussion for today. Close. Okay. I just had one comment. Sean, did you ever get that sent to the ACM list? I did. I have it out on the ACM list and the Facebook. Okay. On the Twitter. Okay. How are we looking for CFPs, by the way? Have they increased or are they still kind of holding where they were at? I don't have insight as to how many people have submitted. I'll check real quick. Okay. What do you see? Well, feel free to continue. I have to navigate through my okay. drive to get there. Okay. So in terms of the working group updates, yesterday with risk. Um, Got a metric ready to yep. go. CII best practices badge is all ready to go. Um, mm -hmm. We have talked with uh, um, OSI. Yeah, yeah, making connections too with this project called Clearly Defined. So you can take a look there. Um, there, there's an API that they provide data out of. I'm not sure how 
we're not sure what the data is, like in terms of the robustness of the data, like how far back it goes. Um, but there might be some data that clearly Divine provides that we don't have access to otherwise. So um, we're going to start that conversation and just kind of see where things are at. Um, there is a, a new metric in Augur with respect to risk, which is not only it's kind of building on the licenses that are in the project as identified from Phasology, but then also identifying those licenses as whether or not they're OSI um, defined in, in the OSI list. So that's what that metric is showing right there, that small screen capture. So and we're gonna be building out another metric on around OSI, um, OSI defined licenses. Um, any other things on risk? Sean, did I get it? No, that's the, that's the main stuff. Okay. Um, with respect to DNI, we on Monday did finish. Did we finish both speaker and attendee demographics? I forget. I think we're so. pretty close. I think they're both in a pull request. Yeah, they created the pull request for both. Okay, so that's great. So it's nice to see those kind of moving forward slash done, um, and that'll round out some of the really kind of the primary metrics around um, event diversity. It, I know that there can be more. Um, and a couple others came up with respect to diversity of material, diversity of languages, uh, diversity in the delivery of talks. So there were some nice ideas that came out of that um, discussion as well. But it was nice to put those to, um, to kind of closure. And I think there are a couple other metrics, maybe three in DNI that are on the immediate roadmap. Um, you can always take a look at this metrics release tracking spreadsheet. Um, I know that Evolution has a meeting coming up on Thursday. Sean, sort of look at you. Um, yeah, we've got a pretty solid list of um, metrics ready to go. Okay. And um, we've cleaned up a lot of the issues in the repository from before. Okay. Like just with, we had multiple templates that was a little confusing, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, I'll be on that call. And so maybe we can update the spreadsheet at the time. Yeah, I mean, I think the spreadsheet's pretty up to date. Are you gonna have any that are ready for the next release? Yeah, we have like nine or 10 that are gonna be ready for the next release. Okay, so maybe we could push through a few of those. Yeah. And actually get them in as pull requests and I can turn those rows into purple. Purple's good. I don't purple. know if we'll be ready for purple tomorrow on more than a couple, but we'll be there. Even just a few at a time, you know what I mean? Slowly but surely. Yeah. And then the same is gonna hold true for value. Um, I haven't attended value for a couple of weeks. Georg, have you been at value? Uh, I wanna say I have, but I don't recall right now where we are. Okay. They didn't, they didn't meet last week. Okay. So I do think there's a value call this Friday, so I am... There was supposed to be one last Friday, so I'm not sure if there's one this no, Friday. It was not supposed to be last this coming Friday. Oh, okay. All right. My mistake. So I um, I have a... Quick question. Oh, yes. More context. I'm, I'm trying to... Yep. Yeah. So each one of the... So in the project, we have five different working groups. And so those working groups are diversity and inclusion, risk, value, evolution, and common. And each one of those working groups is working to identify metrics that would be, that would help kind of provide transparency around risk or around value or around DNI. And so each of the working groups has a regularly scheduled meeting. Some of them are every two weeks, some of them are every week. And the, one of the goals in these meetings is to define um, what the, what the new set of metrics are for our second release. So there has been a first release of chaos metrics and we're gonna be doing a second release um, the day before FOSDEM, January 31st at ChaosCon. And so the working groups are, I'm asking the working groups kind of where they're at in terms of articulating the new set of metrics for the second release for version two, essentially. Does that help? 
Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And I also found the page about metrics and 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 saw you know followed when when you were talking about each one's thing. Cool. Yep. And so that spreadsheet that we have, the spreadsheet that's in the minutes, mm -hmm. on the metrics release tracking spreadsheet, that that'll kind of show you what has been released, what is ready to be released, and what's kind of on people's minds that mm -hmm. we're not talking about at the moment, but additional metrics that could probably provide further transparency on these particular groups. So each one of the tabs represents a working group. Perfect. So I just opened the value working group minutes. Yeah. And last time we met, we discussed the social currency metric system. Oh, okay. And had several recommendations for revisions, which I still need to make sure we do before the next meeting. Okay. Are you going to be there this? I have a faculty meeting this Friday, like an yeah, office be, meeting yeah. that conflicts. Okay. Um, okay. So that was that. Was that. Um, and I am at the end of my notes. So were there other things that people wanted to bring up? I did see that Gary had for the CFP of 15, including spam. Yep. Can, do you know how many spam there are? I would have to look at each one and identify them now. No. Okay. Hopefully it's not 14. <laughs> spam. No, we have some, we have some good ones. Okay. Um, and Sean, you're, you had said that you were going to submit a state of the chaos project. Yeah, I'm going to do that. And then I'm working with Remy. We're going to highlight some of the ways that people have used the Augur API to build their own websites. Okay, so you've got um, a couple on your yeah, list. Yeah, we've got a couple of folks now who are just, they don't care about our UI, even though it's amazing. Um, they just, <laughs> they want the data. So, okay. and I think that's a common use case, really, honestly, because everyone's got their own little corporate infrastructure where they want to see things a consistent way. Okay, that sounds great. Um, uh, Georg and Daniel, I, I can't see the list. So do you know if folks from Batergia have submitted? Is that Daniel something? has. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, I did. But uh, okay. there are so we are we're now finishing some um, some reviews. So you will see like a bunch of them. Okay, that sounds good. I was just again because I don't have transparency, but that sounds good. Okay. Um, great. I mean, honestly, those. If, if 12 is the current number and Batergia and Sean have a few more kind of on the way. Yeah, for sure. There's at least two coming. Yeah. Um, for a one day event, that's sounding pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, and I expect a couple of extra people submitting two extra talks. I'll try. I don't okay. Yeah. Thank you for trying. Yeah. Okay. I have uh, someone from Google who is interested and someone from GitHub who is interested in talking with me about submitting. Okay. There are a few more in the pipeline. Okay. That sounds, that's, that's actually really good news. I mean, based on the number that you just put out. Yeah. So it's, I don't said, I think I froze again, but I think that's really good. News. The number that you just put out and kind of listening to the talk here. Okay. Um, anything else on the agenda for today? that people want to bring up? On the uh, community report, what I was yes. uh, thinking now that we have the list of repos that Jenkins X wants track. Yes. We have the data in one place. I was thinking about trying to create this remote. <laughs> so without collaborating through the calls, but trying to coordinate through the mailing list just as uh, it's a mode that we don't use a lot in chaos, and I think it would be interesting to try that yeah. in chaos and to include more people. So I think it would be a I would try. Yeah. Try what? Try what? He wants to try to talk about the community port reports through the mailing list and not just the calls. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that would be. Yeah. It would be more. Yeah, mailing, mailing lists are, man, uh, mailing lists are hard, but I can try harder. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it would do a couple things, at least in my mind. One is it would do this in a very transparent way. I mean, I know these calls are open to everybody, but the asynchronous nature of the mailing list allows everybody some insight, even if they don't participate. For sure. Um, and then it might also, and I don't know if this is what you have in mind, Georg, too, but it might also 
um, allow other people who are part of communities to see what's available. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, and maybe something they want to do as well. So not only transparency in the process, but kind of <laughs> a visual of what can be. So, so um, just one thing about the mailing lists, because I, I, I recall a long time ago, this was um, something that we did. And then for me, at least for five years, I didn't. Um, yeah. I've, I've had uh, Google groups, act, you know, they're, they're kind of like mailing lists at that point. Um, and they, they have the convenience that you can go to the group and see, you know, all the threads. But it's really just a mailing list with a, with a mailbox interface. Um, um, so so I, I, I was just wondering because I, you know, when I signed up for the mailing list here, I found myself not sure whether I did the right thing or the wrong thing. There's only a place for me to put my information and remember that I did. Um, so ha have you guys considered uh, using Google Groups as a, as a mailing list approach? Or? So we have considered a variety of different options. And the, my favorite at the time was to go with an approach similar to Google Groups, but Discourse. But then the community as a whole was very much intent on just staying with the current mailing list that we have. Yeah. So, this course yeah. is actually uh, proving very, very um, like, like I, I've seen a lot of communities use them. And you know they, they really uh, deliver good on high volume uh, you know, of, of communication over time. Uh, I think you know it's it's what forums were once upon a time, right? So, um, yeah. So, uh, would this be something to consider, or just you know what, what works today is good? So. It's something we have considered in the past, and um, we even had a discourse um, instance for free for one year, but people just wanted to continue using the mailing list. Uh, so if you want to bring up the conversation and see if things have changed in the last year, feel free to do it. It's an open community, but my sense is it's probably going to stay on the mailing list. Yeah. Well, let's do that after, you know, after a bit of time, you know, let me, you know, at least understand the lay of the land before I say like, let's change the lay of the land. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I was just wondering about the choice, right? So thanks. Yeah, I think the, um, honestly, the way that the mailing list is used at the moment, I mean, we do so much of our work here in these meetings, in these synchronous meetings, that, see you later, Daniel, that um, perhaps starting a new list may not be as much overhead. I think we use the mailing list more early and less so now, just that's the way the work is kind of set up. So now might be a reasonable time to reconsider this that's my that's my take on it yeah um i i think it offers a little bit more than github issues can when you're talking about a topic uh it's a place for people to articulate the thought behind how to articulate on the work yeah i guess I, so i'm one of the people that expresses that does express concern because there's a, a way that communities work and anytime we suggest a change in that way of work, I have to be pretty well convinced, just personally, it's not like I have the full say, but it's just usually my argument that changing, we're getting a lot of great work done and changing the way that we work can be tricky sometimes, that's all. Um, well, thank you. Thanks. Yep, sure. I put it in the minutes that we will, something that we want to reconsider. Not necessarily now at all. Like I, know. I was wondering where, where you guys were with it. That's all. We're very we appreciate all comments. <laughs> <laughs> so don't sweat it. All right, cool. Um anything else from folks? Not for right. me. Okay. Um, Great. Right. Um appreciate the time, everybody. I did mention the chat if you guys don't mind. In the end, I just had to um, you know. I wanted to come in and, you know, um, you, I'm not sure if there's enough context in, in, in this call, but um, I basically uh, come from the Node.js project. 
where we're trying to start this initiative for uh, diversity and inclusion uh, related to accessibility, related to um, open source, where you know people go volunteer their time and are not necessarily um, you know in a mindset where they want to do something they don't like to necessarily be doing, um, uh, and and it's okay, but because they're delivering software to, to, to have that argument, we're, we're here to volunteer. Um, it's not fair that you ask us to actually do something that might be less convenient for us. Um, um, these are not necessarily, um, um, you know, statements that you hear, but it's very, very hard to, to conceive of open source collaboration uh, that is inclusive uh, for, with, for people with um, various kinds of disabilities. Um, so so my, I don't have a vision for the initiative other than the fact that there is a lot that is not heard because a lot of people who struggle unconventionally struggle to openly open an issue up and say, hey, listen, I have a unique problem, <laughs> you know? Um, and the tools that we use to collaborate um, in open source, sadly, do not eliminate the disabling case that is conventionally easy for everyone, except for those who might be struggling um, uh, to, to you know, be caught up with the collaboration. Th there's just too much left unheard and too, too much left unanswered. Um, and, and so, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy we found uh, chaos, which was recommended by GitHub um, in a call by, you know, with certain members of the GitHub workforce. Um, and, you know, we ended up here uh, at the height of preparing the first ever uh, set of questions about uh, DNI uh, for our annual survey. Uh, there's a lot of good vibes in the community, but just people are, lo are looking at the uncertainty and they are not necessarily inspired by tenable uh, direction to head. Um, and what I was, you know, what, what I was hoping to, to get at by, by joining, you know, with chaos is that we actually come up with a way to measure uh, how much inclusion um, is not there, um, detail what is in the way of it happening, um, it's not as simple as telling people, uh, can you please add a pause button for people to pause the conversation? Or uh, can we eliminate emojis? Because I personally have um, trouble reading emojis when they're used um, in, you know, without context. Um, and it could be very stressful. Like these are all things that can only come after we actually understand how many people shy away or live away from open source um, and end up leaving it very, very homogenous. And, you know, let's be honest, it is very homogenous. Um, yeah. So, so I might recommend, I mean, if you, I have, I think it's great that you want to pursue it. So in the chat here, I put a link to the metrics template that we use. Yeah. And so, I mean, one of the, probably the simplest thing to do, I mean, obviously I think this fits in the DNI working group, what you're talking about. Yeah, so, so yeah, I was just, you know, bringing the context here, uh, just, you know, um, seeing it, um, um, yep. Um, and then also not to forget, I, I really have to thank you guys um, in the DNI calls and the help, um, yeah. you know, um, afterwards. Um, it really pushed things very forward for us. So. Awesome. That's super to hear. <laughs> um, um, I, I would honestly recommend if you can articulate kind of what you're talking about here with respect to, say, inclusion that's not there or barriers that are in the way, you know, for inclusion, um, any ways that you can kind of use this template to capture that is a great first step. Yeah. Um, and I don't want it to be my own barriers and my feeling of not 
not getting to a point where I can feel that there is a sentiment for inclusion, you know, yeah. or a lack of the other one. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's not, it's not animosity or bad intent. It's just lack of, of, you know, experience um, for some that makes it very hard to relate. Um, yeah. and, and so I'm hoping really that as a, as a broader spectrum and, you know, not just for, ASD or um, yeah. you know, mental things. So yeah, I know. Spe spell it out broadly here, and then bring it to the DNI working group. There are some super bright people who <laughs> who will talk through this with you. Okay, so so I'll just follow that template. That, yeah, that. and don't worry about filling everything out. I mean, it's largely just the description and what the objectives. I think might be good for starters. Oh yeah, no, I mean <laughs> yeah. that. Because I looked at all the other PDFs, I just didn't know where to begin, right? So, so thank where you for that. Yep. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Right on. Yeah, uh, and as Matt said, just even if you just put a title at the top to start the conversation. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Okay, well, thank you so much. Yeah, sure. All right. Um, well, I, I think that will call the end of this weekly session. Um, so next week is Thanksgiving in the US. So I still plan on being here on Tuesday, but well, <laughs> I think this might affect some of the schedule for next week. Maybe not might. I know what will affect some of the schedule for next week. So anyway, just FYI. All right. So until then, talk to y'all later. See you then. Bye. Bye.